great pleasure to welcome Pastor George as he continues his sermon on wonder working faith. Glory, glory be to God. Glory be to God. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> glory be to God. Uh, I want to, first and foremost, I want to thank God for my wife. She's, uh, she's the best. A wonderful wife. I'm so blessed to have her in my life. Amen. The Bible says a virtuous woman who can find. Amen. It's a blessing to have you in my life, my love, and what you are doing in the ministry. And Jesus is, is with you. And he will continue to be with you. Amen. Amen. Today is our Holy Communion service. Oh, sorry. Today is our anointing service. And uh, I want you to get ready. And I know God is going to do some big things here. Amen. I don't want to say a lot, but uh, I just want to encourage you. If you are, whoever is watching us on uh, Facebook, May God bless you, and I believe God, today is your day. I just want you to stay tuned. Amen. Because God is here. And I want to thank God for our powerhouse prayer meeting last night. It was very powerful. 7 o'clock to, to 8 o'clock. None stop praying, praying. It is wonderful. Every Saturday is our powerhouse prayer meeting from 7 to 8. And again today in the morning we have another powerhouse. It's awesome. You don't know what you are missing. You don't know what you are missing. Uh, may God bless you. And uh, you are hearing me from, I don't know which part of the country. Uh, I just want to welcome you to the service on Facebook. May God bless you. It's not by accident. I'm going to minister the word of God. I have been with God. I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet and I know this uh, and uh, uh, I know God has given me a word in a season that is going to change somebody's life if you believe. Amen. If only you can believe. It's all about believing. Amen. It's all about believing. Because God works with our believing. Amen. Let's go to the book of Joshua, uh, to the book of uh, Second Chronicles, chapter twenty. Amen. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna return thanks to the Lord Jesus this morning, and we're going to welcome the Holy Spirit together in our midst. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's go to the book of Second Chronicles, uh, chapter uh, twenty, verse twenty. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. You don't know, I'm very excited this morning. <laughs> we have had a great week with my wife. We have had a great week. And I have a great yesterday just in the presence of God. Amen. Now, look at this. The Bible says, And they rose early in the morning. They rose early in the morning. And this is Jehoshaphat and, uh, and the house of Judah. They rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of the Cairo. And the Bible says, as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. It might be just God is speaking to somebody this morning. Hear me, A.A. Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, mm. so ye shall be established. Believe in the Lord your God, and ye shall be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. So you see, there are two dimensions of faith. There is a faith you believe in God which brings establishment in your life. There's also a faith where you believe in his servants, the prophets. If you don't believe in your man of God, the, the, the Bible says, believe his prophets. 
God's prophets, and ye shall prosper. Sometimes the reason why people don't prosper, they're struggling moving forward, is because they don't believe in their man of God. If you don't believe in your pastor, if you don't believe in him, if you don't believe his instructions, because he's been instituted in his office by God, your pastor may look weak. They may look like they don't know nothing. They may look like they are going through a hard time. They may look like uh, what you don't think they should look like. But I can tell you some. It is the time when they are strong. That is the time when they are anointed. That is the time when, we, when they declare things over your life. Things shall surely come to pass. So all you need is to believe in your man of God. If you can line up with what your man of God is saying, the Bible says, ye shall prosper. It is a scripture. And Jesus said in John 10, 35, and the word of God cannot be broken. We can't break the word. We can't break the scripture. Your pastor can, can teach you stuff, can declare things over your life to your next level. Out here in this. So that's what I want you to understand. If you can believe even today's message, you believe the word, you believe prophetic instructions, I'm going to tell you some. Some, some is going to change in your life. There's going to be a testimony that is going to hit your life. Are we hearing this? And I want you to understand this. Let's give thanks to Jesus. Jesus, thank you for your message and your grace this morning. I bow before thy throne because you called me into this office as a prophet, as a pastor, as a teacher of the word. Use me this morning to bless your precious people. Help me, Lord, reveal your glory, reveal your word. In the name of Jesus, I welcome the Holy Spirit. Fill this place in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You are watching me, I don't know which parts of the world, but I want to let you know this, that this is your day. I want to let you know this is your day. God has got something for you today. I want to you stay up to the end of this ministration. I have been with God. It's our anointing service. I'm going to decree things in the spirit. And there's going to be supernatural manifestation of the goodness of God and of the power of God. Are we hearing this? And I want you to get ready. Now without uh, wasting a lot of time, I want to continue with the message that I began last, last week on Sunday. So I'm going to continue with the same message. Last Sunday, I began to talk about, I believe, I believe. It's one of the most powerful messages ever, my love. What I began last Sunday can change your life. I began talking about last Sunday can command the blessings of God to show up in your environment. What I began talking about last week can change your life, can open up uh, supernatural doors for your progress, for your promotion, for your elevation. And I want you to get ready. I'm going to continue the same message. I'm hearing the word of God. So last Sunday, I began to talk about Nine foundations, nine, nine foundations of a wonder waking faith, a wonder waking faith, a faith that produces wonders. Are we hearing this? A wonder, wonder waking faith. You see, a wonder, it is something when you look at it, it causes you to start thinking how could this be how could this happen that is a wonder it, it it takes you into a realm of amazement you are just amazed you are taken aback you are astounded you are perplexed you cannot comprehend it something beyond you 
human comprehension is a wonder. Are we hearing this? So we're going to be looking at the, the, the foundations of a wonder working faith. The found, last week we talked about one foundation. Today I'll continue with more foundations. Last week we talked about one foundation which was the word of God. Foundation number one is the word of God. You can never operate. You can't function. You can't operate in a wonder working faith without the word of God. The word of God is a first foundation. If you want to walk in a wonder working faith. A faith that everybody they get amazed. Everybody is confused. They look at you, is there, any, is there anything wrong with you? What happened in your life? Wonder working faith. And I believe God is going to do the same in your life. People will be amazed. They will be wondering what happened in your life. We call that a wonder working faith. Are we hearing this? Wonder working faith. Wonder where people were thinking like your life is gone and all of a sudden you you kind of jack up and, and God has just elevated you. They will be wondering what happened in your life. We call that a wonder working faith. I will hear in the word of God. Now, before I continue, because you know I'm an author, I write books. I've written so many books. I've 20 books across the globe. They're all over the world. 20 books. And uh, this, this message I'm ministering today, there are two books I would encourage you to read which can help you. The first book you can get is called, uh, it is called Understanding the Divine Secrets of God. I wrote this book. It's going to help you understand about wonder waking faith. It has many pages here. It has about 182 pages. This book. I wrote this book. It is all over the world. Understanding the divine secrets of God. It can help you understand more about wonder waking faith. I have another book for this subject I'm teaching on. For this message, another book is called The Exploits of Faith. Exploits of Faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. It's all over the world. People, they buy these books. You can check on Amazon or Apple Store. They are there. This has got about 100 and... Uh, these are big books. 170 pages. Exploits of faith. It can help you when it comes to understanding more about wonder waking faith. Now, very quick, let's go to uh, Psalm, the book of Psalm, Psalm chapter, Psalm chapter 11, verse 3. Holy Spirit, thank you. I will come in this place. I will come you in this place. I sense the presence of God right now. Psalm chapter 11 verse 3. May Jesus be glorified through his word. And may somebody receive a miracle this morning. Thank you Jesus. Psalm chapter 11 verse 3. Now the Bible says. If the foundations. If the foundations. Be destroyed. What can the righteous do? If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Now, what are these foundations? These are foundations of faith. Faith has got foundation. Faith is not blind. Faith is not something you just say. Faith has got to have foundations for it to work. You can 
can say, I believe, I believe for many, many years and nothing happens in your life. Unless your faith is built on certain foundations that I'm talking about today. If the foundation, if the foundations of the righteous, who are the righteous? Anybody that is born again. Anybody that is a child of God is the righteous. So if the foundations of the righteous be destroyed, what can the righteous do? I'm hearing this. So last week I gave you the first foundation. Now before I give you the second foundation, I want to give you the second example of what wonder working faith is all about. Last week I gave you the first example of what wonder waking faith is all about. I gave you Acts chapter 3 verse 1 up to verse 16. Now I want to give you the second uh, example of what wonder waking faith is all about. You're going to know what this faith is all about. Let's go very quick. The second example of a wonder waking faith the second example of a wonder waking faith. Wonder waking faith. Let's go to the book of Mark chapter 2. Wonder waking faith. The second example of a wonder waking faith. Let's go to the book of the gospel of Mark chapter 2 verse 1 to 12. Are you getting what I'm saying? I pray and I prophesy, may God bless you today. Because I feel some is about to happen in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I feel some is about to happen in your life. The second example of what wonder waking faith is all about. Let's go to Mark chapter 2 starting from verse 1. Up to verse 12. The Bible says, and again he entered into Capernaum. And again Jesus entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noised that he was in the house. Jesus entered into Capernaum. Now if you don't know Capernaum, Capernaum it is where Jesus performed his first miracle. I may remember the miracle where he turned water into wine. Yeah. That miracle happened in a place called Capernaum. It happened in Capernaum at a place at a place called Cana, a Cana. Cana is in Capernaum. And this place is in this is by the Sea of Galilee. Jesus was brought up in Nazareth but he went and began his ministry in Galilee where most of his disciples were doing the fishing business. You should know your place of assignment. Don't go anywhere in life. You know, I, I want to let you know this. Jesus was brought up into a place called Nazareth, but he never did any ministry in Nazareth that very much. He had to go somewhere else. And he even said it in Mark chapter 6. Jesus said, a prophet is never respected in his own town. So he had to go to a place where they could celebrate the anointing. If you know you are in a place where people they don't respect what you carry, go to the next city. Go somewhere where Jesus is going to lead you. Even Jesus, the Son of God, he had to leave, he had to leave Nazareth because no one believed him. They, one time he went into Nazareth, he went in his hometown. In the book of Mark chapter 6, the Bible says, he could not do any mighty miracle there because of unbelief. Unbelief. They never believed in Jesus. Hence, he had to go to the Sea of Galilee 
where they could receive his ministry. So the problem right there, it is not about the anointing. It's about people. Are they ready to receive what you carry in your life? Are you hearing the word of God? Now let's go, let's continue. I was just giving you a preamble on that subject. And again, Jesus entered into Capernaum, so that was the second time. After some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Everybody knew that Jesus was in the house. Now, verse 2, the Bible says, And the straight away many people were gathered together, in so much that there was no room to receive them. So, where Jesus was, the whole house was filled with people. And there was no room anymore. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached unto them the word of God. Why did Jesus preach the word? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And why? Because faith, because the word of God is one of the greatest foundations of faith. The word of God is one of the greatest foundations of wonder working faith. So Jesus had to preach the word. It doesn't matter even though he was the son of God, even though he was God, he had to preach the word. Why? Because just because you are with Jesus, it doesn't mean that everything is going to be for free. You're going to get everything in your life by faith. That's why he had to preach the word. Why? So that people can have faith so that they can receive what Jesus came to deliver here on earth. Amen. It is not for free. Even Jesus had to preach the word of God. The Bible says, whilst he was in the house, he preached the word unto them. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Verse 3. And they come unto him, hear this, bringing one sick of the pouch, which was born of four. Five guys, four guys, they came to Jesus carrying a guy who was paralyzed. Paralysis. Paralysis is a condition which is caused by some sicknesses or disease. There are some, some diseases which can paralyze somebody. Maybe, I'll give an example. A heart attack can cause paralysis. You find that if people, some people who, are, who have stroke because of heart attack, some of them, they are left paralyzed. Maybe one side of their brain is not working. We call that condition paralysis. It's the same situation with this guy who was paralyzed. Four guys carried this guy on a mat. And I assume they were, all of them they were on each side of the mat. This guy was here. The other one there, he, and they were carrying like this. They were carrying the guy who was paralyzed. The very fact that he was paralyzed, it means that he was important. He could not do anything for himself. Are we hearing this? Now hear verse 4. And when they could not come nigh unto Jesus for the praise, they uncovered the roof where Jesus was. And when they had broken it up, they laid down the bed where in the sick of the pulse lay. That is what we call wonder waking faith. A wonder waking faith is a violent faith. A wonder waking faith is a faith that is persistent. It's a faith that does not have uh, respect for barriers. 
It's a faith that, that, that does not give up. That's the one that worked in faith. They, they found out that they could not get to Jesus. Instead, the Bible says they broke the roof. They had to tear the roof. Wonder working faith. You know, if you want to see wonders, if you want to see God's wonders in your life, if you want to see supernatural wonders, you need a wonder working faith. You need some dangerous faith. These guys had to tear the roof to get to where Jesus was. Wonder waking faith. It's, they were crazy people, mad people. You could call them mad. How do you destroy somebody's house? You know how much it takes to roof the house? They went over, destroyed the house, and they lowered. The guy who was paralyzed. Why? It's because material things are not more important than somebody's life. I want to speak to you people. You want to elevate material things over the soul of a human being. You cannot compare material things to the soul of a human being. These guys had the revelation. Would rather destroy the house than allowing this guy to die of sickness and disease. Are we hearing this? That is wonder waking faith. That's what he does. Let's go to verse, verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, when you have a wonder waking faith, Jesus is going to see it. So faith can be seen. Faith is a substance. When you got faith, Jesus will see it. So much that even praying for your needs is too late. Because faith is perceivable in heaven. When you got faith, Jesus will see that faith in your life. Jesus is going to see your faith. Are we hearing this? Because the Bible says in verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith. So faith is discernible. Faith is tangible. Faith is, is seeable. Faith can be seen. It is material. It has material to it. It is not just the wind. Faith is, is God material. It's substantial. You can know you got faith to get results. Because Jesus saw their faith. And hear what he said. He said unto the sick of the powers, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there, and the reasoning in their hearts, why does this man speak blasphemy? Why is this man insulting God? Because in the, in the Jewish culture, especially the scribes, they never believed anybody had the power to forgive sins. Only God can forgive sins. And as a matter of fact, they did not believe that Jesus was God. They never believed it. They struggled with it. So when Jesus forgave sins, it was a problem. They began to say, Ah, oh, look, he's now insulting God. Does he have the power to forgive sins? They don't understand that Jesus cursed him. He came, that's the reason he came for. He came to forgive our sins. He came to redeem you and me from sin. That's the reason why he came. They didn't have revelation and knowledge. Now, the scribes, these are professionals in the law, in the Torah. They knew the law, but they never have revelation about the Messiah. They didn't know Jesus was the Messiah in their midst. So they struggled with it. 
they began to say, who is he to forgive sins? Now hear this. And in verse 8, the Bible says, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned with themselves, he said unto them, why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether is it easier, which one is easier, to say, seek of the past, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk? Verse 10, but that ye may know that the Son of Man, the Son of Man, has power on earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick of the pious, I say unto you, arise, take up thy bed, go thy way into thine house. But now you've got to understand, though the scribes and the Pharisees, though they believed that no one had the power to forgive sins, Yet again, they never believed anybody had the power to raise somebody from death to even open blind sight. They, they, they struggled with miracles. So when Jesus forgave the sins, he also commanded the paralyzed guy to walk. And they were speechless. They had no word anymore to speak. Are you hearing the word of God? Yeah. Now, verse 12, the Bible says, And immediately the guy, he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them, insomuch that they were all amazed. The word amazed there is wondering. We call that a wonder working faith. It is a faith that causes wonders. It is a, a faith that everybody, they'll start ha guessing at you. What happened? We call that a wonder-waking faith. The Bible says, in verse 12, and immediately arose, took up the bed and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God saying we never saw it on this fashion hey. mm. they, they, they were so amazed by wonder working faith and they said we've never seen it in this way it has never occurred like this this is what wonder working faith is going to do in your life now let me give you the second foundation that was an example of what wonder working faith is all about. And I'll give you the next example next week. But now, let me give you the second foundation of a wonder working faith. The second foundation, the first foundation, I said God's word. God's word is the first foundation of a wonder working faith. The second foundation is what we call obedience. 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 If you want your faith to command wonders in your life, you must understand it to take obedience. As a matter of fact, faith is the obedience of scripture. If you can't obey the word of God, then you go no faith. Are, are you hearing this? Yeah. The only proof of wonder working faith is obedience to the word of God. If you can't obey the word of God, I doubt your faith. The second foundation, the second foundation of a wonder working faith is obedience. When you got no obedience, you got no faith. Now obedience to what? Obedience to the word of God. 
Obedience to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Obedience to divine instructions. Obedience to prophetic instructions. If you don't obey, no obedience, no faith. No faith, no victory. Are you hearing this? Yeah. Obedience. Obedience. And I'm telling you this. Obedience is a second foundation of a wonder working faith. A faith that produces wonders. It is if today you made a decision. I don't know where you are watching me from. If today you made a decision, I'm going to walk in obedience to the word of God by the help of the Holy Spirit. Your faith will soon be speaking in your life. The reason why your faith is so weak it is because you are not obeying the word of God. You are not obeying God and his instructions and his voice. The more disobedience you walk in, the more weak your faith becomes. I want to repeat this again. The more you walk in disobedience, the more weak your faith becomes. And the more defeated you become in your life. You can never walk in victory without faith. And you cannot walk in faith without obedience to the word of God and to the voice of God. I hear in the word. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse. Verse, verse 1 to 22. So the second foundation of a wonder waking faith is obedience to the, everything the word of God talks about. Everything Jesus is telling you. Everything the Holy Spirit is telling you. You're going to obey. If you want to have a faith that works. If you want to have a, a wonder waking faith. You better obey the word. When the word of God says, don't be offended, don't be offended. If the word of God says, come to church, come to worship in the house of God, you come. If the word of God says, forgive, you forgive. If the word of God says, don't be bitter, don't be bitter. If the word of God says, pray, you pray. When you obey the word of God, your faith is going to be of another level. Your faith is going to be stronger than you ever thought. Obedience to the word of God is going is the only arena which is going to build up your faith. A very strong faith. Obedience to the word of God. Your faith is as weak as your, as your disobedience is, as your obedience is. Weak obedience equals to weak faith. Are you hearing the word? Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying, folks? Yeah. God bless you. Now let's go to First Samuel. I'm not going to read everything. Let's go to First Samuel chapter 15. Now you, you remember how that God gave Samuel a divine instruction concerning Saul. God gave Samuel the prophet to talk to Saul, the king, what to do. The prophet gave Saul, the king, instructions of what God was saying. However, Saul chose his own way. He chose his own way. And you know that way he chose? Disobedience. He disobeyed God. God's people pay extra attention to what God is saying in your life. Don't do your own thing. Don't do your own thing no matter how educated you are. Your obedience to God is the determinant factor 
to how you end up in life. Now I want to let you know some. No matter how a king so was, he lost his throne. He lost his position because of disobedience. He disobeyed God's instructions. God told him, when you fight against the Amalekites, my enemies, when you fight against them, I want you to destroy everything in their camp. This is what God said to him. But he decided, he decided to keep the sheep. He never killed the sheep. Even he never killed the king of the Amalekite. He captured him but never killed him. And he kept the sheep. That is disobedience. He did some, but he did not do everything. Partial obedience is not obedience. Partial obedience, this is where many people are missing it. Partial obedience is as good as disobedience. Of course, he did some, but he did not do everything God commanded him. Therefore, it was regarded by God as disobedience are we hearing this yep. now here in verse 11 I want this is somebody's word listen carefully to what God is saying to you it is not about your degree it's not about your job it's not about anything you know it's about obeying God's word it's about obeying the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's about obeying God, walking in obedience to God's divine instructions. It doesn't matter where you may be today in your life. If you obey God, if you obey God's instructions today, your life will go to another level. You are going to scale heights of greatness. It's not about uh, where you are. Wherever you are today, if you can obey God, your life will change levels. So the second foundation of a wonder working faith is obedience. Now hear what God said in uh, 1 Samuel 15 verse 11. This is what God said to Samuel the prophet. God said in verse 11, It repenteth me that I have set up so to be a king. God repented that he had, he had appointed, he had set up so to be a king. For he has turned back from following me. When you stop following God, his word, his instructions, God ain't be happy with you. He, this is what God is saying. He says, it repenteth me that I have set up so to be king. For he is stand back from following me and uh, has not performed my commandments. In other words, has not obeyed. He did not obey what God commanded him. I, I want to let you know this. The, the, the number one thing God wants from you above everything, it is obedience to him. It is obedience to his word. It's obedience to his instructions. It is obedience to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because when you obey God, God sees you a humble person. There is no humble person who is not going to obey what God is saying. It is pride. The reason why people choose to walk in disobedience. And you do understand that God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. And the Bible says, humble yourself under the right hand of God so that he may exhort you in due season. So if you don't obey God, it's pride. Saul was full of pride. Hence, he did not do all that which God commanded him. What happened? He lost his place in destiny. God rejected him. God divided his kingdom. He, he had to tear away the kingdom away from him. 
and gave it to David. A man after God's own heart. A man who walked in obedience to God's instruction. The reason why many people are falling in life is because they no longer want to obey God. They are walking in pride. I, I pray every day, Lord, remove pride off my life. It's not just for you. It's for me as well. Check your life. If there is any pride in your life, it's very hard for you to obey the word of God. It's very hard for you to obey God walking in pride. It's very hard. You always do your own thing. You always have some attitude. You always have some attitude. You always walk in the flesh and instead of in the spirit. I hear the word. Yeah. So here what, what happened? In verse 11, 1 Samuel 15. It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king for he stand back from following me. And has not performed my commandments. It grieved Samuel. And he said unto the Lord. And he cried unto the Lord all night. Imagine. Samuel began to cry all night. Because he knew how great it is to obey God. God's people, if you are walking in disobedience. And it does not even affect you. It does you know, when you walk in disobedience, you must even weep before the Lord. Samuel did not walk in disobedience. But just to hear that somebody is walking in disobedience, he began to cry. Because, because his heart was out there to please God. Last night, I was weeping here with my wife, crying to God, asking God to have mercy for the people in this nation of Australia, in this city, crying to God, did, did we walk in the way they walk? No. Why? Because I know when I see somebody walk in disobedience, it affects me because I know it's always a wonderful thing to see people walk in obedience to God. Only then I'll know that God is pleased. And I want to see my God pleased in heaven. I don't know about you. Now here, in verse 22. In verse 22, the Bible says, And the Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and the sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, you see, no matter how much sacrifice you give, no matter how much you give to the Lord, no matter how much you tithe, no matter how much you give offerings, no matter how much you pray and worship God, no matter how much you come to church, if you are not walking in obedience to God, all that is nothing. It is zero. That's what the Bible says here. This is what God said to Samuel. As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. That I don't care how long you fast. You can fast 22 days. You can fast 21 days. It does not matter. If you are walking in disobedience, all your fasting is zero. So, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of rams. So the second, the second, the second foundation of a wonder working faith is obedience. Obedience. Disobedience is going to dethrone you. You're going to lose your destiny when you walk in disobedience. What's obedience is going to, to, to enthrone you 
God is going to elevate you at your obedience. And the Bible says, Thou shalt be above only and never beneath. The reason why people are under, beneath, check your obedience walk. Check how obedient you are to God. Check your obedience. Check your obedience. I, I, I'm going to come back. I'll continue with obedience. Next week. I feel I got some that God wants me to expound on obedience. God's people, when you walk in disobedience, you become spiritually blind. You become spiritually deaf. The Holy Spirit is never close to you. Your eyes become spiritually blind. The spiritual eyes. Disobedience is poison to your spiritual life. It will kill you before your time. Obedience is the only gateway to the supernatural. If you want to see God's presence in your life, you better be God, begin to walk in obedience to God and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Are we hearing this? Yeah. Today is our anointing service. I want to be praying for you right now. I want to be praying. Wherever you are, whichever parts of the world you are watching me from, if you are sick, or if you know anybody who is sick, I want you to write their name right there. You are watching us by Facebook. If you know anybody sick, anybody sick of an incurable disease, or any disease, you know anybody who is sick, anybody who is sick, I want you to type their name right there. I'm going to pray, and the angel of healing, angel that work with me, angels that work with me they're going to heal your body if it is your relative I want you to mention that I want to pray, I want to pray, I want to pray I want you to get ready and if you are struggling in obeying God I want you I want you to just say something right there because I'm going to be praying right now in a moment if you are struggling in your spiritual life I want you to get ready because Jesus is about to move. Because I'm a prophet. I know what I'm talking about. I'm ministering to somebody here. You are struggling in your finances. It's because you have not been obeying God in your giving. I want you to understand this. You are not obeying God in your walk with God. Now I want you to understand this. I'm going to be praying for you. Two, two days, three, uh, last week I prayed for somebody on the phone. They had a swollen leg. Jesus healed them. Their leg was swollen for, for two weeks. For some weeks. I prayed for them. They got a healing. The swollenness is gone. Amen. That is Jesus at work. Amen. I don't care where you are. There is no distance in the realm of the spirit. I am going to pray for you. And the Lord is going to give you a miracle. If you have anybody, anybody, if you have anybody you know they are sick and they need healing, and if you have anybody you know that don't know Jesus and you want them to come to Jesus, write down their name right there. Amen. 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 Just write it down. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to be praying for you. And you want a miracle before this month comes to an end. I want you to write your name there. You want a miracle before this month comes to an end. I'm about to pray. I'm about to declare in the name of Jesus. And you also want God to bless your ministry. I'm here as a prophet. I'm here not just as a pastor, I'm a prophet of God. I have seen a lot. As I'm speaking now, things are happening in the spirit. If only you can believe. It's all about believing God. I want you to lift up your hands. Wherever you are. Thank you, Jesus. 
Malukana la Beos. Ramahaze Nehea. Wherever you are, those that are watching me on Facebook Live, I want you to lift up your hands. I'm coming right where you are in your house. And Jesus is going to give you a miracle. Jesus is going to give you a miracle. The Lord Jesus is going to give you a miracle. The Bible declares, believe in the Lord your God, and thou shalt be established. But believe also in his servant, the prophet, and thou shalt prosper. Thank you, Jesus. Mazakane le bonos, raganzeke pleskuna liafana, gangonoja na hezana kavia, riendosona kravere palia nosa. Now, I'm going to decree things right now. I'm going to decree things in the spirit. Jabakana Mirelos. Wherever you are, you're watching me by means of this, this broadcast. The angels of God that work with me, they are here right now. I prayed for somebody last week. They had a swollen leg for some weeks and I probably months. Their leg was swollen on the phone today I called them two times the solemnness is gone that must be Jesus Mazande le katuna rakres kanstane liva munahadai jokande I want you to believe God with me now I gave you an instruction before if you are sick you know anybody sick your family member anybody if, if they are sick of anything, I want you to write their name there. If you are sick, just indicate there that you are trusting God for a healing. And I want to pray right now a prayer of faith. And the angels of God that govern me, that govern my life, that govern my anointing, that govern my, my life, that govern me, my assignment, they're going to heal you. Now, I'm going to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Mazona Akrovenos Raanze Ketene Aborava Manja Kazezuya Rabakande Kende Menegia Manzo Katana Malelio Menje Kezenato Provanalia Ragas Kenzdonalia Menjo Konzo Sota Rabba Kande Mene Gedos. Mighty God, I command and I decree. Any sickness, anybody sick. Because the word of God says, you, you give the disciples power over all sickness and diseases. I stand here as a prophet. And by the action of God on my life, the action of healing. I command and I decree any disease presented here, any sickness and disease, I command those sickness and diseases, I command them healed now in the name of Jesus. Healed now in the name of Jesus. I command them healed. May the angels of healing go ahead and heal every part. They are healed now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jana Hatobanaso. Le Gristona Maria. That was my first instruction. Now the second instruction is you find it very hard to walk in obedience. In obedience, I want you to lift up your hands. You can indicate anything on the on the live broadcast. Don't be ashamed of anything. I want you to lift up your right hand. I want you to lift up because, you see, disobedience is caused by a demon called the prince of this world. Go and check it in Ephesians chapter 2. The prince of this world is what causes people to walk in disobedience to the voice of God. 
You see, your life is as strong as the obedience you are walking into. Your life is as colorful as the, the obedience you are walking into. You can't walk in obedience in God. You can't walk in obedience towards God and His Word and remain the same in your life. No! Obedience is a spiritual ladder for your supernatural elevation. I pray and I command in the name of Jesus any spirit of disobedience be broken off now of your life in the name of Jesus. And I lose you now in the mighty name of Jesus to walk in obedience to the voice of God to the Holy Spirit. Some of you, you mean good but you cannot just obey God. But you have been delivered right now. If you believe that it's done. In the name of Jesus. Mazana Hadres Solius. Now I want to pray for the last prayer. Two last prayers. You, you, you are believing for somebody to be saved. Your children, anybody you know. To come to Jesus. I want you to lift up your hands right now. Blessed Jesus, I give you reverence and honor. The Bible declares that the harvest is plenty. Pray to the Lord of harvest that he may send laborers. I command and I decree in the name of Jesus. Your family member, they'll find Jesus. They will be born again. Any demon, any devil keeping your family members away from salvation they are broken off now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the last prayer I want to pray that the Lord is going to anoint you this week the Lord is going to anoint you for unusual miracles for unusual breakthroughs in your life your spiritual life will go to another level you are going to experience healing miracles you are going to experience testimonies of all kind. And God is going to preserve you from evil and any form of wickedness and reproach and weakness in the name of Jesus. And that God is going to remember you. Lift up your hands. I stand as one of the prophets in the land. And through my authority as a prophet, I command and I declare, even those that are watching us on, on, the, on the Facebook, I command and I decree in the mighty name of Jesus that your spiritual life will never be the same again. Your spiritual life will go to another level. That this, this week, this month, is going to bring the best in your life. And you are going to experience laughter. Laughter as you have never seen it before. The joy of the Lord is going to flood your life. And there will be unusual testimonies on every side. In the name of Jesus. Jean de la Paloso. I cover you in the blood of Jesus. I cover you in the blood of Jesus. If you have the anointing oil, I want you to anoint yourself. Because it's the anointing service. I want you to anoint yourself. If you have the anointing oil, I want you to anoint yourself in the name of Jesus. Manzala Hadus, Riga Mandala Maza, Alato, Rabba Zande Ketene, Rabba Kande Mene Kadus, Rabba Kande Kinde Bereto, Rabba Kande Kinde Mandaza. Rabba kande kende kedu, Rabba kande kende katu, Rabba kande kende katu, Rabba kande kende. Now I see somebody's leg. You're gonna be watching the service. You've got a, a problem in your left leg. I saw it in the spirit. Now I, I, I command. I command in the name of Jesus. That left leg is getting healed. I release the angel of healing. I saw it in the spirit, discernment. Somebody, you, you might be watching me, something wrong with your leg, your left leg. There's a healing going through that body in the name of Jesus. 
Manzolata, you might be watching me today, tomorrow, any day. But there, there's something wrong in your leg. I command healing now in the leg in the name of Jesus. I command healing and deliverance in the leg. Now, it's a left leg. Left, not right leg, left leg in the name of Jesus. And I give reverence to Jesus, the Son of God. I cover you. Write testimonies. If you have any testimony, I want you to send them. I cover you in the blood of Jesus. May the Lord go before you. May Jesus sustain you. May the Lord pour oil upon your life. And may God bless you. I'll continue next week talking about nine foundations of a wonder working faith. It's good to see Marco. Marco, God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I told you these books, you can lay hold of these books. You can go on Amazon and Apple Store. You can find this book, Explos of Faith, if you want to understand more about the subject I'm teaching, I'm preaching. There's another one, it's called uh, Understanding the Divine Secrets of God. May God bless you. I'm going to call my wife to come and release us. Will you welcome my wife, my sweet wife? God bless you, my love. I love you. Anointed woman of God. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor George, and thank you, God, for today's message. Let's end our service as we began in a time of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you that you are showing us wonder, working faith. Thank you, Lord, that through these sermons and your teaching, we are going to have wonder, working faith. We thank you, Lord, that you are growing us up in the way of your word and that you're helping us to walk in the path you have set before us. Lord, help us this week to meditate upon your word, to understand and to develop our beginnings and endings and our strength towards ending well with you in faith and a wonder-working faith in that. Be with us as, as we leave, Lord. Be with us as our week, not only for us to go and spend quiet time with you, but to spread the gospel to all those who need to hear it. In Jesus' name.